coronavirus pandemic is upending our lives in ways many people could not have imagined. Work and socializing now mostly confined to home. Schools obviously closed. Most long-term plans canceled. And while some in the federal government seemed caught off guard, this very problem is something some leaders did warn about. One of the world's most accomplished innovators took to a public stage five years ago, warning about pandemics. It all sounds quite prescient now to hear Bill Gates' advice then. If anything kills over 10 million people in the next few decades, it's most likely to be a highly infectious virus rather than a war. We have invested a huge amount in nuclear deterrence, but we've actually invested very little in a system to stop an epidemic. We're not ready for the next epidemic. That was 2015. Gates going public with the evidence showing the U.S. was not ready for this kind of pandemic. So as part of our ongoing special coverage, right now we turn to our report on these warnings, what they reveal about the U.S. response today, and more critically, how they can inform our approach in the future and potentially save lives. You know, of all the experts out there in areas ranging from medicine to disaster prep, Bill Gates excelled in several critical fields. Computer innovation, which requires original thinking, business, which excels on ruthless execution, and then his current chapter, public health philanthropy, where Gates takes on all kinds of medical challenges around the world with both his skills and his money. Gates became the richest person in the world by leading a tech revolution, and he became increasingly famous as a nerd with a can-do spirit. Here he was on David Letterman back in 1995, sporting a hard hat and lab coat. What are the things that you've designed for the house that really you're very excited about? Well, I've got a, a trampoline room uh, that I can go and use. <laughs> <laughs> a trampoline room. That's right. This is like an actual trampoline or like yeah. a computer trampoline? Non-virtual. Trampolines are not the item many billionaires brag about buying, but Gates isn't the typical billionaire, and he's different in ways that are especially relevant now. Take his intellectual hunger. The young entrepreneur once recounted how he vacationed only about once a year and used that time to dig into obscure academic research. Like most of us, Bill says that he escapes the office about once a year. But that's where the similarities end. I spend at least a week a year where I go off and just read uh, people's PhD theses and new things that are going on in the field. You got to read those PhD theses. This is one reason that Gates has seen around so many corners. He reads ahead into the research to see where things might go. And now that he does philanthropy full time, he's been deploying his money and platform to press challenges that some corporations and governments don't get around to tackling. The Gates Foundation presents ideas, papers, and money, as you've probably seen, to governments around the world. And Gates has had his own run-ins with Donald Trump. At one foundation meeting, Gates recounted a classic story where Trump was attending a horse show in Florida. Gates' daughter was there too. And she noticed that Trump took an extra car ride to leave the area so he could make one of his special helicopter entrances at the event. This is footage MSNBC's Chris Hayes first reported. About 20 minutes later, he flew in in a helicopter to the same place. So clearly he had been driven away, and, but he wanted to make a grand entrance in a helicopter. <laughs> Now, whatever Gates thought of Donald Trump's attempts to impress, Bill Gates still took the opportunities, controversial or not, to advocate pandemic policy with Donald Trump. Here they were at Trump Tower right after Trump's election in December 2016. Gates explaining he was pushing science and health policies at that very meeting. I saw him at Trump Tower. You know, I said, hey, science and innovation is a great thing. You should be a leader who drives innovation. And that conversation was about a broad set of things in energy, in health, in education. People have all kinds of ideas. Few get a private audience with the president. And while Bill Gates is not out here telling everyone, I told you so, the evidence shows that in many ways he did. Listen to Gates' prescient warnings from 2015. We need to get going because time is not on our side. In fact, if there's one positive thing that can come out of the Ebola epidemic, it's that it can serve as a early warning, a wake-up call to get ready. If we start now, we can be ready for the next epidemic. 
it was time to get ready. Many governments didn't listen or didn't want to spend the money. Gates specifically outlining the type of potential virus that would be most infectious. Notice how it eerily predicts parts of COVID transmission. You can have a virus where people feel well enough while they're infectious that they get on a plane or they go to a market. You yourself can be carrying it. You might not even know it. That'd be the worst thing in the world is to go to church to worship and to sit next to someone and infect them. That was crucial knowledge. And regardless of the saying that you may have heard, knowledge actually is not always power. It really depends what people do with knowledge. Gates took his knowledge and he went back to meet with Donald Trump again in 2018. He advocated the Trump administration get serious and back a universal flu vaccine. He tried to prod the president with a kind of flattery, saying a universal flu vaccine could be kicked off and energized by you, Mr. President. What a great legacy. Now, Gates later said Trump sounded interested, but there wasn't much progress. We can tell you by September of last year, Trump signed an executive order that created a flu vaccine task force, but it was headed by someone already on the job, Health Secretary Azar, and that effort didn't come with any legislation, let alone any new money to prepare for pandemics. Now, Gates also says Trump offered him a possible role as a science advisor, something Gates declined in favor of just actually offering the science advice publicly and privately that we're telling you about. Now, the government can take it or leave it. This is Gates' exact role today, and he's speaking out again now with advice for anyone who's listening, and it includes rebutting some of the newest claims by President Trump. It's very irresponsible for somebody to suggest we can have the best of both worlds. What we need is the extreme shutdown to, so that in six to ten weeks, if things go well, then you can start opening back up. It's very tough to say to people, hey, keep going to restaurants, you know, go uh, buy new houses. Ignore that pile of bodies over in the corner. Just, you know, we want you to keep spending because there's some, uh, maybe a politician who thinks GDP growth is, is what really counts. That was a stark way to put it. Gates was saying that as the body count rose, but before videos like and pictures like this went viral, the footage of the human wreckage of this virus in America, a country that has so much money but is reduced to scenes like this. Now, since Gates' expertise stands at the intersection of innovation, business, and public health, it's worth noting that he's one of the business titans emphasizing that while the economic toll is severe, that comes second to the challenge that cannot be reversed, this virus continuing to kill so many people. It is really tragic that the economic effects of this are very dramatic. I mean, nothing like this has ever happened to the economy in our, our lifetimes. But money, you know, bringing the economy back and doing money, that's more of a reversible thing than bringing people back to life. Yeah. You know, that is a fundamental piece of wisdom from a very rich man. Your life is worth more than all the money in the world. It echoes something that many already have admired about Bill Gates, that he embodies success without flaunting it. As the great Andre Benjamin once put it, Bill Gates don't dangle diamonds in the face of peasants when he's micro-softening the place. Consider your surroundings or you leave without a trace. The point is real strength doesn't need to flaunt itself. And considering your surroundings is crucial for staying alive. That applies to staying safe right now, as well as preparing for the next pandemic. As Gates also explained back in 2015, as he would later try to warn Donald Trump, the medical science shows a path for what we all need to do. And with that in mind, tonight, Bill Gates gets the final word. The problem was that we didn't have a system at all. In fact, there are some pretty obvious uh, key missing pieces. We didn't have a group of epidemiologists ready to go. In a large epidemic would require us to have hundreds of thousands of workers. The failure to prepare could allow the next epidemic to be dramatically more devastating than Ebola. It didn't get into many urban areas, and that was just luck. Next time, we might not be so lucky it would spread throughout the world very, very quickly. If we start now, 
we can be ready for the next epidemic. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.